So in this video, I, I want to do some things with uh, um, bitwise operators and some, you know, like XORing and uh, bit shifting and stuff like that. So the first thing I want to try to do is just print out a, uh, a number in binary. So we've already seen like a char is just a, a byte and a short is just uh, two bytes and and so forth. Um, so what if we want to see what it what it actually looks like in bits? You know it's easy to print it out in hex. Printf can sort of do that for you automatically. Let's say char c is um, in hex it's 0f and if you want to see that printed out in hex, well it's sort of trivially easy. You just do that and then you compile it and it comes out on the screen it's it's f right it's the same thing as 0xf um, but if you want to see the binary that there's no built-in way to do that but we can write a method that does it and the key to doing it is the uh, the bit shift operation let me change this to decimal and let me replace this with uh, something that's going to look a little bit weird maybe so this is one shifted uh, zero to the left so in binary, what that means is, let's say that it's a byte. You know, it's not necessarily a byte. Let's say it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'm so bad at counting. One, two, three, four. There should be one more zero here. So this is what I mean by uh, one. And if I shift it zero to the left, it's just itself. And so the output here should be. I've made uh, some kind of syntax error. Um, Expected identifier before numeric constant. I'm going to pause the video and figure this out. Oh, dir, 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 I just had this um, this number up here that I have to delete. And um, so now this should print out 1, and of course it does. Now if you shift it 1 to the left, that's going to be 2, and if you push it 2 to the right, I'm sorry, to the left, that's going to be 4, and so on. It's giving you powers of 2, and the powers of 2 that it's giving you are, you know, 1, uh, 2, uh, 4, and uh, 8, and etc. So that's what's happening is, is the 1 gets shifted further and further to the left. Now this, this C is in hex. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like that. So what if what we want to do is use this little shifted one as sort of like a, a pick to examine each one of these digits in turn. So I'm going to write a little repeat loop that does that using shifting. And I better comment these out or I'll get yelled at again and I'll forget. So let's do int i equals 0 for i equals 0, i less than 8 i plus plus and so here I'll do print and let me just print uh, as a decimal and uh, what I'm going to print uh, is c shifted to the right i times and one okay so let me argue about why what I'm doing here makes any kind of sense. So this is C. So initially C is going to get shifted to the right zero times and what we're going to do is and these two numbers and so that's going to match in, in this column right and it's going to be the result is just going to be one and then the next time through C will shift one to the right and then it'll be one and then C will shift one to the right and it'll be one. So it'll print out four ones and then it'll start missing after these four fall off and then it'll be all zeros. So it'll be sort of what we want except backwards, right? That's not the way we want to think of 0xff um, and it's just because it's printing them in the order that it's finding them and it's sort of printing it out in the reverse of the order that we want. But we can change that by making the for loop go down instead of up. So we'll start at 7 and then go down until we are less than or equal to 0 and that will make it look nice and pretty. 
Excellent. Um, so now let's take all this and uh, what if, let's try to do something a little bit more general here. Like if I make this an, an integer and let's say that I want to consider that integer, the code that I've written will not print that out correctly because it because it goes up only up to seven here, it doesn't notice that. So we can make this a little bit more general. What is seven? Seven is the number of bits in a byte minus one. And uh, you know, a char is a byte, it has eight bits. So more generally, what we want here is the size of C minus one. So if we make this change, oh, times eight, times eight. Okay, so now it, it works. So eight times uh, size of C, this is eight bits, four bytes, minus one. This is, uh, so it does it, it starts at 31 and goes down to zero. So that's 32 times. And that's once for each of the 32 places in the four byte integer. And you can change it to a short. Uh, you could change it to, um, a long. Okay, so um, it prints it out nicely. So I'm gonna just sort of make a new function. Doesn't need to return anything because it's a print function. And let's just call it print uh, binary. And we'll take um, what should we take as input? A long, let's say. So I have to I have to choose you know I have to make it something so I'm, I guess long is the most general because you can always you can always cast up to a long without losing information. So now I've put all this stuff up here in a function and I can call the function like this. So now it should print the thing out again and uh, since I'm calling it a long. Does anybody remember what the code here is for long? I think it's L. Uh, obviously that did not work. Man, I really hate futzing around with this. I'm sorry that it, it expects unsigned end, but it's really long. What is a stupid long? I'm going to pause it and look it up. OK, so for future reference, it is LD for long, just like I am an LD person for not being able to remember that. And uh, okay, so it works works great. And if I change this to a char or something, um, here's a, a warning because there's overflow, you know, overflow here just in the definition because this is one byte, so I can't put all that into one byte. It's warn warning me about that. But otherwise, the, the function works just fine. And if I take that off, it doesn't even yell at me. It just, it just does it. So now let's use this um, to play around with some other binary operators and sort of see how they work. So let's just work with uh, longs. And how about the long f o f? OK, so you know what that guy looks like. And so. Uh, what if I want to make the bits alternate? What is that? That is uh, 1 and 4 is uh, 3, right? S no, it's not 3. It's 5. Um, so let's make a long d equals uh, 0x50505. And let's print that one out too. So now it'll print them out right after each other. And so now they're kind of bouncing around a little bit. Now what if we want to take various logical products of these, like um, what are some, some logical products? Uh, so one of them is logical or, right? So or is like this. So you do or with the, the vertical bar. So this will be the or of these two numbers. Let's look and see what happens there. So now you can see that there's a one in the result if there's a one in, in any of the places that there was a, a one in the original number. Let's 
we put a 1 there, then... Okay, so now this kind of proves it. So you can almost see, like, the truth table. In fact, if I were a better teacher, I would be making a truth table here. But you, you can see that this third row is the logical OR of the first two rows. And what if you want to do logical AND? You just write an ampersand. Actually, that's what is going on here. And maybe I should have explained that better, but um, I, I needed to be able to print out the binary to be able to illustrate all the operators. So maybe now you can go back and sort of understand that. So it's taking the AND of each row. So 1 AND 1 is 1. Um, 1 AND 1 is 1, but 1 AND 0 is 0. 0 AND 0 is 0. 0 AND 1 is 0. OK, so that's that logical operation. Another one that comes up a lot is uh, hat, and that is exclusive or. So now you can see that the, the product is 1 just if exactly 1 of the two inputs is, uh, is 1. And uh, that is pretty much everything except for negation. Maybe I should have I should have talked about that first. So let's look at uh, C and then also the, the negation of C. So there's the original C, and now let's underneath that, let's print the negation of C. So tilde is the negation operator. And you can see that it just turns the zeros into ones, so it sort of reverses it. And those are the, uh, the bitwise operators, and that's uh, pretty much it. So, uh, you know, you can shift left as well as right. Um, and left shifting by one is the same thing as multiplying by two, just because uh, it's like multiplying by 10 in decimal, you know, it just adds a zero. Some people, when I was in college, they said that the faster way to multiply, you know, you shouldn't do int j equals uh, 2 times c. Instead of that, you should do j equals c shifted to the left by 1. But if you if you use a decompiler, it's exactly what the compiler is doing for you anyway. The compiler is not stupid. It's not worth the trouble. It makes your code more complicated. Um, and I guess another thing is that they, uh, if you right shift, the, the digits just run right off the screen. So first let's print these two things identically like this, and then if you shift right by one, this last one here will just fall right off. And as you keep shifting, they keep falling, and then they just go somewhere into some abyss, and zeros come up on the, uh, the left-hand side. So that's all I can think to say about uh, bitwise stuff, so I'm going to stop.